Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. As we thank you for this most beautiful day that you have made, that truly, Lord God, we can rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. And Lord God, as we celebrate Thanksgiving Day today, we thank you, Lord God, that every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Because, Lord God, you have been blessing us each and every day. And we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for today's proceedings, oh God. I thank you for every person that put their hands to the plow in making it the preparations, in making it a successful day. I pray, Lord God, that you bless them as they give out of their needs. Strengthen their bodies, I pray today, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to have your divine way in and through these proceedings, oh God, that everything will be done decently and in order. Bless the membership of the organization, oh God, the senior management, uh, the governor, deputy governor, premier, deputy premier, all the senior officers, oh God, be with us today. I pray, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and as we continue to work together as in oneness as a team, not only on this day, but every day, oh God, showing your appreciation to us as a people. And Lord God, we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. God save our gracious queen. Long live the noble queen. God save the queen. Send her victorious, happy and glorious. Long to reign over us. God save the queen. Out of the huts. Of history's pain, our ancestors bled and died. But with strength and with power, we overcame to restore the Virgin Islands' pride. To preserve our beauty, we devised a plan to obtain ownership of your precious lands. Educating our people is the golden key to maintain the success of this territory. Oh, how radiant are your daughters and how wealthy are your sons. Your beaches boast of beauty and your success is second to none. Green and brilliant are your hillsides. They replenish our hopes and pride. Oh, beautiful Virgin Island, your qualities can never be denied. Oh, beautiful Virgin Island, your qualities can never be denied. Your Excellency, Governor Augustus Jasper. Deputy Governor, Mr. David Archer, Jr. Commissioner of Police, Mr. Michael Matthews. Deputy Commissioner of Police, Mr. Alwyn James. Officers, men and women, civilian staff, everyone, the RVIPF family, I bid you a good morning. We're all here today to commemorate good, great, excellent police work. In the case of the Commissioner of Police, of course, his Excellency and the Deputy Governor, they are here to tell us thanks, to show appreciation. Without any further ado, I will invite His Excellency the Governor to bring brief remarks. Thank you very much, Officer Davies, and to the Deputy Governor, Commissioner, to everybody here this uh, morning, a very pleasant good morning. And a happy Thanksgiving um, as well. And today is a, a day of giving thanks. Um, in particular, and I'll come on to this, to those who we really, really do need to give thanks to, which is those out here. And I'm delighted to see so many officers come along today, and also I believe some family members are here as well. It is truly heartening to see how many people have turned out. Maybe it's because, as Officer Davies says, there was an offer of a free meal. But I hope it is more because this is a really, really important moment uh, each year. And for me, it's an absolute honor to be here, to recognize and to celebrate the best of the Virgin Islands, the best of public service, the best of dedication, and the best of protecting our 
community. Now, it's been a tough year. And I remember last year, standing up here, we had a, I think it was a dinner last year, was it? But we had a, a dinner, and I remember saying, it's been a tough year. Um, and it was a tough year that year. We were still recovering from the hurricanes. We were still dealing with all of the aftermath of that. And this year has not got easier. When we sat down, and I'm sure the commissioner and the senior command team did the, the force plan at the beginning of the year, and at National Security Council, myself, the premier, the deputy premier, would sit down and look at that, that plan. Nobody put in it, could everybody work 200 times more than they're already doing? Because the demands have grown exponentially this year. And we had a choice as a territory. Do we hold our hands up and say we can't cope with this? We're dealing with the day-to-day -day business of keeping our public safe from crime. We're dealing with all of the issues we still have in repairing our territory and rebuilding it. And then along comes a pandemic. And in the front line of that has been our police officers and our police staff to keep us safe. And I want to say a huge thank you and a huge appreciation to every single police officer every member of police staff, but also to their families and those who support them, because I know that is a commitment that goes with the whole family when somebody joins uh, the police force. It is a delight to be here. I want to mention a little bit about what has made me so proud of the RVIPF uh, this year, because I've seen the best of our police force come out. I have seen when we've had to do very difficult decisions as a territory, sometimes at very late notice. We would finish a cabinet at 11.30 at night, 11.45 at night, I would ring the commissioner and say we decided a curfew. At 12 o'clock, we would go onto Facebook Live and announce it, and at five o'clock in the morning, the RVIPF, well, at least I didn't hear it, but without grumble, the RVIPF were out there enforcing, ensuring that our communities were safe and were professional, were committed, were dedicated, we're keeping each other safe and we're keeping our communities safe. So before I go on, can everybody just give every single officer, every single member of staff, a huge round of applause. <laughs> now during the last year, normal business didn't stop. And I've seen the dedication, the commitment that shines through when you put on a uniform or whether you're non-uniformed. Those values that you hold, integrity to, to serve, uh, serve the public with the respect, the integrity that, that is required, that is critical. And these are tough times, I'm not going to deny that. We have challenges in our security at the moment. We have seen those challenges across our border. We have seen the challenges dealing with a health pandemic whilst also dealing with the crimes that we know exist in this territory. And recently, you know, I spoke about with the commissioner about the success that you had in being record breakers. It's not a record that I would have liked the territory to have, but this force should be incredibly proud of the record it set of getting one of the biggest drug seizures in recorded history of the British, uh, UK and overseas territories families. And I know that came with a huge amount of work and dedication, and it is a success for RVIPF that we are stopping the, the dangers of those drugs, but also breaking down the criminality behind that, because this is a society I know that is vast, vast, vast majority are law-abiding, want to have a safe society. And I've always said this, but for me, the most important thing of any, any society, of any country, of any government in the world, you can do everything else, but if you don't ensure the rule of law, if you don't have people feeling safe, nothing else happens. People won't go to school if they don't feel safe to lose their, leave their homes. People won't start businesses if they don't think the rule of law is going to apply. People won't come here on holiday uh, if they think we are not a safe place. And so your work to protect us every single day is also protecting the future of the territory. It's protecting us as one of the safest places in the Caribbean, and we're going to stay there. It's protecting us as one of the, the best economies in the whole region, and we're going to stay there because of your hard work. You are the absolute core and bedrock of the BVI, and I want you to be proud every single day of what you do, because you are not just putting on a uniform, dealing with all of the issues that, that the community present every single day, with the way that you do it so well, but you are also securing our territory for the future, and I'm hugely grateful for all that you do. I know also it's been a challenging time, with questions about, uh, I won't get into the details, but I know there has been, been reports of, of uh, officers potentially involved in issues. And I want to stress how I know 
that that's actually, again, a sign of strength. A sign of strength that you can investigate anybody without fear or favor, and that you will hold your integrity core. And I know that the vast, 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 vast majority of our officers hold the, that integrity, hold those values, and keep serving dedicated to the public. And that is something you should be applauded for, and I am hugely grateful for your dedication on that. Now, this will be my last time that I will stand up here. I hope the next governor stands up and says that wasn't such a difficult year or a tough year. Um, but I want to just reflect a little bit on my time here because from the moment I got here, I remember when I arrived in 2017, the police have played an absolutely core role to everything that has happened in this territory. Two hours of me arriving in the territory, I remember I went, I was met by the commissioner on the steps of the plane. We drove to Government House. Within two hours, I had put my bags down, hadn't even unpacked them, and I was out looking at the damage from the August floods. Which I remember, somebody at the time said to me, Governor, this is the worst for 100 years. This is our 100-year event. I won't say who it is, because it's not fair. They were a senior public officer at the time. They said, the good news is, that's it, the worst for 100 years. You won't have anything else happen in your time here. Two weeks later, that particular lady came along and did her damage. I saw that same public officer and he said to me, whoa, that really was a 100-year event. You won't have anything, I promise you now, nothing else will come. Then what happened two weeks later, another lady decided to come along as well and do another 100-year event. But what it taught me is that actually, when we all take on jobs as in the public service, when we dedicate our lives to serving the community, we do just that. We don't take on these jobs, and I know working with the police here and in other places, you don't take on the job as a police officer to get your job and be the same job every single day, whatever happens. Your police officers, we, we all serve the public because we know when the times get tough, that is when we shine. When everybody else loses their head potentially or when they potentially panic or when they are scared, when they are fearful, when they don't know what to do, that's when you step forward. And I've seen that, and I've seen that from the day I arrived, the hours after I've got here, the leadership of every single officer at an individual level, not just a command team who I applaud for all of their excellent work, but that individual officers making a difference when everybody else is saying, this is tough. Can I get through this? Am I gonna be all right? And somebody in uniform or even out of uniform is the person there by their side saying, yes, we're gonna get through this together. So in my time here, you have been a rock. RBIPF, and you have been a rock that has shone, that has made records around the world. I don't deny all of the challenges, and there's lots more we want to do. There's more that I would love to support you on, and I'm pleased in, in some way that I've been able to, to get funding to rebuild the stations. We just signed an MOU for another $450,000 of money from the United Kingdom to repair the marine base to support training. This is a journey that we'll need to keep on going, but I want you to know that every single day, you have my back and I have your back. And I'm hugely grateful for that because you have the territories back. And I'm very, very proud of this force. I'm very proud of what you do. And I'm very grateful for everything that you have done in my time here, but everything that you do to serve this community so well and to serve the future of the territory so well. So thank you very much. I'm delighted that today we will be honoring and recognizing some, but when you pick some, that can sometimes mean that you don't pick others. That's the nature of it but I know also a message to the whole force of my pride and gratitude for everything that you do. So thank you very much and have a, a great ceremony. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. I must tell you though that your rest will be very brief because I intend to call on you in a moment. We're moving right into the presentation of certificates for meritorious conduct, leadership, and that's for both um, police officers and civilian staff. And we will be asking His Excellency and uh, Mr. Deputy Governor, Mr. Archer, to assist us um, respectively. So um, Your Excellency will be asking you to do for police officers and sir, for civilian staff. And to aid both of you in that regard, I'll be inviting our HR manager, Mrs. Uh, Lauren Reimer, to come to the podium. Good morning, everyone, and His Excellency, if you can join me. I'm going to be presenting the awards for leadership. 
Um, the first award goes to Inspector Saif Kadura, <laughs> Detective Inspector Peter Reeve, Detective Inspector Vernon Larocque. <laughs> For leadership, Louet Malone Daniel, or Maintenance Supervisor, Acting Facilities Manager, Otley Hodge. <laughs> Sergeant Sean McCall. Inspector Smona Bruley. A certificate of commendation to Auxiliary Officer Florita Lake. Certificate of recognition to Constable Ovis Stevens, Constable Sivon Simmons. You got two. Sergeant Adriana Grant Davis for meritorious conduct, and she gets two awards for that. Constable Valine Smart. Constable Ricardo Blackwood. Constable Calvin George, Detective Constable Calvin George. Detective Const Constable Noel Besson. Detective Sergeant Kenrick Davis. Detective Sergeant Richard Francis. Detective Constable Alston Butler. Detective Constable Ron Augustine. Detective Inspector Gilbert Charles. Detective Constable Sylvester Theophil. Meritorious conduct for Detective Sergeant David Moore. Detective Sergeant Vincent John. Sergeant Daniel Caesar. Constable Agatha Smith. Constable Silis Vanterpool. Constable Chantel Harry. Yeah. For excellent work ethics, Auxiliary Officer Florita Lake. Yeah. Auxiliary Chad Gaskin, and he's with the Special Joint Task Force. Auxiliary Duchesne but she's also with the um, task force. <laughs> Auxiliary Curtis Turnbull, he's also with the joint task force. <laughs> Acting Sergeant Kevin Prince. <laughs> Governor. And uh, Detective Constable Matthias Prince would col collect on behalf of Kevin Prince. And that would be it for you, okay. Excellency. Thanks, Thank you. Okay, for our civilian staff, certificates of recognition to Lisa Reimer. <laughs> Exemplary service, Shanika Jennings. <laughs> and Kateri Smith. Exemplary service for William Christo Wilmoth Christopher, my apologies. <laughs> Jamal Osborne, and he's for our tech team. <laughs> Venner Williams. Venner Williams. That was the communications, crime scene, and accounts team. We have the admin team, Nadia Douglas, Irma Vanterpool Butler, Cork Smith for exemplary service. He's a part of our maintenance team. 
excellent work ethics, Annette Smith. Part of our maintenance team, Curtis Lewis. Yes. Chris Kane. Yes. Lucy, Lucy Donovan. Yes. Yasmin Hilton. Marlene Bowens of our Virgin Goddess Station. Ms. Chandra Davis for excellent work ethics. Mathilde Brumont. Romano Farmers. Lloyd Moore. Junior Alexander Rosa Mejia. Diana Mills. Akia Thomas for dedication and excellent customer service. Yolanda Stevens for dedication and excellence in customer service. Chandra Davis, dedication. Jashiba Bruli of our accounts team. Vera Allen James, also of our accounts team. And Tanika Arthur, also of our accounts team. Thank you, BG. And those are our presentations for leadership and excellence in service. Thank you so much. I did say that brevity was the order of the day because the place is hot, isn't it? Mr. Deputy Governor, I'm aware that you just sat down, but I'm afraid that the reward for good work is more work. So <laughs> I'll have to invite you here again to bring brief remarks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Governor, Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. I will not be very long, of course, but let me first start off by telling you right now that you are great. Tell the person next to you, you're great. Person on your left, you're great. Person on the right, you're great. So that's the shortest, greatest speech ever. <laughs> But just to extend on that greatness, it was JFK who said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And that particular quotation has resonated throughout the world for civic and public duty. Now, I believe he was speaking to law enforcement officers at heart when he said that, because you are in a place where you work extremely hard, expectation is so high, and we don't always stop to say thank you. And that's the reason why today is important that we stop, and I say that you're great, and the governor says that you're great also, the commissioner, and everyone else within the rank, because we expect so much of you. You have a job where no matter how great you are Monday through Friday, when Saturday comes, if something does not go right, people tend to forget what you've done Monday through Friday. But you must know that there are persons out there within the community, within your leadership ranks, that recognize your everyday, everyday hard work and dedication. It's my pleasure to be here to tell you again that you're great, to say thank you, but most importantly, to always remember to tell the person next to you on a daily basis that they too are great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I really would have liked to listen to you a little longer because one night I was on duty in Road Town and I got a call that a gentleman was blocking the road just as you go up Joe's Hill. So I thought that when I got there, I would have found a car. As it happened, I found um, a man lying in the road fast asleep, blocking the road. Nobody could pass. So I went to him 
you know, and I said, hello, sir. I am Constable Davis. He woke up for a brief moment and said, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and went right back to sleep. No, I had to laugh. That was funny. I'm not making fun of persons who are mentally ill now, but I encountered two um, persons who had some mental issues. So they were having a discussion, very interesting discussion. So I was on duty, so I took a break. I wanted to hear this. So the first one said, man, I have more sense than you. The next one said, no, I'm smarter than you. And, you know, it went back and forth for a while. So then one said, well, if you are smarter than me, I'm going to turn on this light with this flashlight here, and you can climb on the beam, go over there. The other one said, ah, you think I'm stupid? And when I start to climb across, you turn it off, and then I'll fall? Listen, Listen this job is like no other job. None. The things you see, the things you encounter. So we're going to honor our fallen colleagues, civilian and police. So we're going to spare a moment to remember those who served with us, who taught us, who sacrificed, and ultimately they paid with their lives in some cases. So I'm going to invite again our HR manager, Mrs. Reimer, to lead us in that regard. And like Sergeant Davis said, this job is like no other. And of course, in our line of duty, or the line of duty of police officers, of course, we would have some that would not, no longer be with us, whether it's in the line of duty or um, other circumstances, but we remember them today. And I would just like to recite a short poem. Sadly missed along life's way, quietly remembered every day. No longer in our life to share, but in our hearts, you are always there. For those we've lost, Charles Willock, Irvin Rollins, Joseph Toulon, Leonard Foy, Sojourn France, Anthony Brown, Ronald Tobin, Denicio Scatliff, Dennis Joseph, Kimberly Lewis, Francie Liburd, Kristen Robinson Bennett, Maritza Sargent, Gregory Aline, those were our fallen police officers and our fallen civilian staff, we had Patricia Durant and Isola Gordon-Wheatley. If you could stand and give a moment of silence. Thank you. You may have your seats, thank you. Um, we will ask now for Commissioner, sorry, Commissioner of Police, if you can come and give brief remarks. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Can I start by thanking again uh, His Excellency the Governor and the Deputy Governor in particular for not only attending here today to join us in this celebration uh, for the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, but Having been commissioner now since April 2016, uh, what I can say and say from the heart is that both gentlemen that I've just referred to have been staunch supporters of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. And when I first came here, uh, we had a didn't governor, and then you arrived, sir, in 2017, as you've described, and um, the events that we've gone through together uh, have been quite unbelievable. If we, if we were to write a book, people would say it was a work of fiction. I certainly should have read the small print on those contracts that I signed to be commissioner, without a doubt. No one mentioned hurricanes and COVID and anything else you want to name as well. And Deputy Governor, sir, when I first came here, you were doing a different role. You were a, a PS, as I recall at the time, in charge of one of the departments and, and left to do study. But uh, I remember vividly the moment you returned to the Territory in 2017 in the aftermath of, of, of those storms uh, and stood on the steps of uh, Government House and, uh, and I looked and I said, I thought, I thought you were over in the UK and, and you said, I was, I've come back, there's been a hurricane. Uh, and not only does that show the dedication of, of, of true BV Islander, uh, but also has gone on since to be our Deputy Governor and an outstanding Deputy Governor in my view. Uh, and we thank you for your support as well, sir. Colleagues, um, 
this is long overdue. And some that couldn't be here today, and you've seen Lauren putting the certificate down after reading the name out, please don't fall into the trap of thinking, oh, people didn't come. Um, as per usual, we are a 24-7 service, and the work still goes on. Indeed, I can, I can actually see Peter Reeve standing at the back, whose name was called out earlier on as one of the awards, and I know where he was earlier doing, doing work on behalf of the organisation. Overnight, Governor, Deputy Governor, uh, we made more arrests for serious offences in, in this territory, including another arrest for, for a murder. Um, and a lot of the names that were read out are people who are actively involved in dealing with some of the crimes that, that we've had most recently in the Territory. So please accept uh, our understanding for the numbers that couldn't be here. For those that could be here, congratulations to those that have received awards thus far. There's more to come. Um, I'm particularly pleased that we've been able to do this at long last because this actually was planned before COVID. Um, but I'm glad to see that even though we've had to space people out a little bit and had to think about you know, the strangeness that COVID brings now, um, I hope that like uh, my tenure in the, in the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, I hope that I will end on a high, uh, and I hope that we end on a high with COVID in terms of seeing the end of the restrictions and seeing people's health being returned. Uh, so let us, all, let us all pray that these uh, vaccines work and that uh, the most vulnerable get seen to first and that we actually do see a successful opening of our territory again and a return to some level of normality. If I can turn to just that, that challenge that now awaits us, which is the opening, uh, December the 1st, it's slated for at the moment, uh, and overnight I've been looking at potential new regulations that we may have to put in place uh, as part of the safety and security of this territory to protect our people from the potential risk of visitors coming here who may or may not have been exposed to the virus. And once again, what it will mean is the men and women of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, whatever role you're performing, whether it be civilian role, whether it be a police officer, whether it be an auxiliary officer, whatever role you're performing, you're going to have a role to play in keeping this territory safe going forward. And I read the regulations last night, and I'll be giving feedback later to the Attorney General about some changes that I think are still going to be needed. And, you know, there's a lot of other people across the public sector at the moment that are working very, very hard, uh, burning the midnight oil, trying to deliver on behalf of this territory. And I just think it is worth mentioning that we are, of course, in public service week as well. And you are part of the public service, but... Police officers in particular are Crown servants rather than standard employees and it always seems a little bit different that we can't always participate fully in some of the things we'd like to, namely because we're a 24-7 organisation and we're often out there working as today has shown. But again, I know Deputy Governor that your team in particular have put a huge amount of effort into recognition of, of, of uh, public service employees uh, and right and proper that you should uh, because we have got a very, very strong team out there as well that, that work in partnership with this organisation uh, to continue to deliver for the people of the Territory. So I would just like people here to just... Uh, pause for a moment, reflect on that, and give a round of applause to our public service colleagues in Public Service Week. Thank you. As I said, this is, this is long overdue, and the Governor mentioned it's the last time he'll stand here before he departs as Governor of the Territory. Uh, and, sir, we do wish you well in your future endeavours. I'm sure we're going to have an opportunity to perhaps at least speak with you uh, before you step on that plane. And no doubt I might find myself standing on the plane making sure you get on and go uh, in the nicest possible way. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and, of course, uh, in your absence, we will support our our Deputy Governor is the Acting Governor until uh, a new Governor arrives. And um, may I say, sir, uh, again, thank you for your support, for everything you've done, and, and thank you for attending today and joining with this recognition of the hard-working men and women of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. For the recipients, I will save my final remarks to. What you represent is the greatness of the RVIPF. I couldn't believe it when I heard the DG use his, his 
very powerful terminology about how great you are. And this is about representation of the greatness. And the best bit about today's award ceremony is whilst my staff officer in particular, Carlton Saunders, I don't know, he's here somewhere, who's been working extremely long hours to try and get this all together. And even last night I was making him do last minute changes. Um, what I love about this the most is it wasn't me that sat down and picked all these names. This is the people of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force who've nominated the people of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. So supervisors, colleagues have put names forward and given reasons why they would like to see somebody else get recognised. And that shows true spirit, true teamwork, true leadership and true greatness for this organisation. So for those that haven't been recognised particularly today, don't take that as an insult or anything negative at all. Your turn will come. For those that have, I give you the warmest of congratulations and I thank you, I thank you eternally for your efforts in what has been an extraordinary period of time. I can of course reflect now myself on nearly five years in the chair and as I, as I stand here today talking to you, the Police Service Commission are interviewing for my successor. And whoever that will be, I hope that he or she will continue the good work of doing their best to support the men and the women of this force. Because, you know, the Commissioner's job at the end of the day is to do their best to make sure that you have the right conditions, the right training, the right equipment, and the right level of support to do the job that we're asking you to do. Um, I can't say it's always worked how I would have liked, and I can't say that we achieved everything I would have liked to have achieved in my time here. But what I can say is I am extraordinarily proud of the men and women of this force and what you've been asked to do and how you've responded to it. And I don't really take a lot of notice of the bloggers, and the negative press out there. And I ask you to do the same. The Deputy Commissioner came up with a brilliant phrase to me yesterday. I'm going to use it, Alwyn, um, because um, once again I was responding to some negative comment in the press. Uh, and I was busy giving my response. And I told the Deputy afterwards, and he said, oh, well, he said, what we call, the, what we call them here, sir, is that's a bush lawyer talking. And I, and I started to laugh and I just couldn't get the word out of my head, bush lawyer, I like that. And of course we've got an extraordinary number of bush lawyers here in the Territory. Uh, no real qualifications but they set themselves up as experts uh, and they do their best to, to give a negative press to, to the work of policing and security in the Territory. Um, it's a team effort. And this year we have seen that word team effort stretched because we've had a joint task force and I was pleased to see some of the awards this morning already mention the work of the joint task force. And for those of you that's had the privilege and pleasure of working with our colleagues in customs and immigration uh, over the last few months as part of the COVID uh, security deployments, thank you again because I do not underestimate uh, the effort, the risk, and the hours that have gone into ensuring that we've minimised the risk. We can never be 100% safe. We have to recognise that. We have to be realistic about that. But I'm absolutely confident in saying to any part of the media that wants to listen that the people here and the people of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force and the people in Customs Immigration who have worked with us have made a difference. And have made the difference between the territory being overrun and the territory spiralling out of control uh, with keeping things calm, keeping things safe and keeping us as secure as we could with the resources we're given. So give yourselves, as I conclude, another pat on the back, a round of applause and as the, as the Deputy Governor said, look at each other and just reflect on how great you really are. Thank you, it's been a privilege. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Give our Commissioner a hand, please, a better hand than that. Thank you. Right. These are the certificates for Commissioner's commendation. Detective Inspector Wendell Ballantyne. <laughs> Detective Constable Jerome Morris. <laughs> and 
and he has three recommendations, three commendations, sorry. <laughs> Detective Sergeant David Moore, he also has two. <laughs> Constable Ricardo Johnson, Detective Constable Jerma Williams, <laughs> Detective Sergeant Michelle Etienne, and Mrs. Etienne will collect on behalf of Detective Michelle Etienne. Constable Aurelius Anderson, and he's of our Virgin Goddess Station. Constable Fiona George, also of our Virgin Goddess Station. Correction, she's a member of our ARU team, Armed Response Unit team. Sergeant Lenroy Samuel. Constable Tommy Daniel. Detective Sergeant Richard Francis, Sergeant Adriana Grant Davis, yeah, yeah. Constable Ovis Stevens, <laughs> Detective Constable Darren Malone, yeah. Constable David Nibs. Sergeant Claude Reimer. Yeah. Detective Constable Sakena Codner. Yeah. Detective Sergeant Stanley Burton. <laughs> Detective Constable Shanelka Francis yeah. Richards. Detective Sergeant Collis Fraser. On, Detective Constable Dane Robin. I don't know if I knew anyone that's taller than the commissioner, but there we have it. <laughs> Constable Gillian McDonald. Constable Kadisha Rochester. <laughs> Sergeant Lenroy Samuel. <laughs> Detective Inspector Jason Harford. <laughs> Detective Constable Dion Marie Campbell. <laughs> Detective Constable Jermaine Egard. Constable Gillian Hobson, and this would be collected by Miss Sharp, sorry. Okay, I guess she's not here. Oh, okay. Sergeant Royston Da Silva. Yeah. <laughs> Inspector Lewis Buckley. Yeah. Constable Carlos Cruikshank. Yeah. Constable Kennedy Emmanuel. Yeah. Constable David Nibs. Yeah. 
Sergeant Mali Sebastian, Constable Denver Prince, Detective Constable Sherian Lavier Lennon, Detective Constable Kenroy Mathias, Detective Constable Stanley Burton, Constable Andy Lawrence, Constable Irvin Smith, Constable Tishoy Joseph, Constable Cornelia Williams, Constable Esau Andrews, Constable Agatha Smith, Constable Forbes Washington, Constable, Detective Constable Kellyan London, Detective Constable Diana Ryan Passad, De Constable Kimani Roberts, Const Constable Duchesne Gordon, Constable Carlos Cruikshank, Constable Jolene Jack, Constable Shamel Matthew, Constable Stacian McKenzie. Sergeant Sean McCall. Constable Llewellyn Olivier. Constable Ricardo Johnson. Constable Denver Prince. Detective Constable Delma Tavernier Perez. Constable Bisoon Shilshand. <laughs> Detective Constable Jerome Padmore. <laughs> Woman Const Constable Tishoy Joseph. Just arrived. <laughs> Sergeant Mali Sebastian. Constable Giovanni Webb. Constable Valine Smart. Detective Constable Tristan Sharp. <laughs> Constable Kejahana Stevens. <laughs> Sergeant Troy St. Helen. <laughs> Detective Constable Brendan Simon. Detective Constable Brad Remy. <laughs> Constable Vikesi Winter. <laughs> Constable Silis Vanterpool. <laughs> Constable and Staff Officer Carlton Saunders. Constable Roland, Rolando Codner. 
Constable Ricardo Johnson, Constable Alvin Bolton, and Constable Gleason Lafue. And uh, I just want you to give a hand. Those were all commendations for exemplary service. And we need to recognize that police officers do indeed give exemplary service. So give everyone a hand. Thank you, Commissioner. Honorable Deputy Premier, Mr. Well, Dr. Natalia Wheatley, Minister of Education, Youth Affairs. Let me take a breath. Fisheries, agriculture, culture, etc., etc. PhD, MSc, BSc, associate, and there's more. Academy Award winner for playing Noel Lloyd. Right? It's great to have you in our presence, sir, and I will invite you, invite you to the podium to bring remarks on behalf of yourself and the Honorable Premier. Give him a hand, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good morning to you. I acknowledge Governor, Your Excellency the Governor, Augustus Jaspert, uh, Deputy Governor, uh, David Archer, Commissioner Matthews, Deputy Commissioner Sorry, uh, James, Deputy Commissioner James, <laughs> uh, all the awardees, um, everyone gathered here today. It is certainly a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, the Premier was leading the standing finance exercises, and he could not leave at this pack particular time. And so he sent me his deputy, and I'm extremely glad that he sent me, and it's not just because lunch is nearly ready, but I'm extremely glad to be here because just witnessing the enthusiasm of the officers just sitting here uh, while you're being awarded with exemplary service, give yourselves another round of applause. Uh, policing is a very difficult job. This is not the Virgin Islands of 30, 40 years ago when perhaps you, you had uh, some, you know, one or two incidents um, a year. You know, we have great challenges that we're dealing with today. I mean, we're just looking at what happened yesterday. There are great challenges. And of course, every police service around the world will have some challenges. And we have a very demanding community. But we do not spend enough time congratulating and commending the officers who are doing just what we're doing here today, exemplary service. And I want to congratulate you for the hard work that you're doing. We're in difficult times. COVID-19 has resulted on a great strain on our resources. But the Minister of Finance wanted me to let you know that we certainly will continue the tradition of Minister of Finances in the past of making sure that we give the police service our full support. Because certainly you cannot do this difficult job without resources. And I had the opportunity some weeks ago to speak to members of the Police Welfare Association. And they made it quite clear to me that they needed support from the government in areas like scholarships and educational uh, support. And I'm also here to pledge to you that I'm certainly, I've already begun my support of officers from an educational standpoint and from the standpoint of scholarships, and you can expect that to continue. You, you sound like you don't want it. I can take it back, you know. <laughs> 
I also take this opportunity to recognize Commissioner Matthews and um, Governor Augustus Jasper, who I believe this will perhaps be your last of these type of ceremonies. And I just want to say on behalf of the government, on behalf of myself, um, our appreciation for the service you have rendered here in the Virgin Islands. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Certainly we here would have, uh, Commissioner Matthews and our governor would have uh, benefited from your experience in, in policing. Uh, governor, I know you are involved in uh, um, some administrative capacity in policing in the United Kingdom, and we would have benefited from that. And, and of course, you would have also uh, made available resources to help the development of the police force here. And I know that we have um, police officers from the Virgin Islands and we have police officers also from the region. Um, I've listened to Commissioner Matthews on a number of occasions and he's emphasized that the police service must look like the community. And I want to congratulate your efforts to ensuring that we have Virgin Islanders and persons from the region well represented on this police force. And I know as we go forward into the future, all persons here through scholarship opportunities, uh, through opportunities to, to be mentored, uh, through opportunities to, to go to conferences and things like that, that the police service here will continue to grow and continue to develop and will continue the capacity building exercise that has already begun so that we can make sure that we have all the skills here necessary to police in these Virgin Islands. So again, I want to uh, congratulate you. Um, allow me to just ask a brief question. Deputy Commissioner, is, is this your last of this type of cer um, ceremonies as well? No? Okay, good. I want to make sure I don't, I don't miss anyone that I need to recognize. But I want to thank you as well for the stellar service you have been given to the community. Give him a round of applause. I take this opportunity again to congratulate all those who have been awarded today. And um, be encouraged, despite the fact that, of, of course, we have a community is very demanding. We have... Um, a great deal of challenges we have to contend with. We have the skills necessary to be able to confront all the challenges that we're faced with here in the Virgin Islands. And I say, continue doing the good job that you're doing. I thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Right. At this time, I'll be inviting DCP Alwyn James to do a particular presentation. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning to everyone. The last four and a half years has been challenging in many ways. The, the governor outlined some of the events and so did the commissioner police. Uh, we had Hurricane Irma, for sure. Um, we had the floods. We, we currently under the um, pandemic. And there were many other challenges during the last four years. And uh, as stated earlier on, the force has done well and performed very well within those last four and a half years. And this could not be without strong leadership, very strong leadership at the helm of the organization. Uh, you think about the many challenging tasks that you do as officers on a daily basis. Well, I would like to invite you to sit in the chair of the Commissioner of Police for you to understand some of the many challenges. Mr. Matthews has done an outstanding job uh, on many days, of course. Um, I have to sit and, uh, what I should say, um, share and sympathize with him as he processes um, some of those challenges. Um, he has also brought a number of different success to the organization. He has grown the organization, so he got permission from the government to grow our establishment by an additional 45 officers. We haven't reached that yet, but 
it's there on paper and agreed to. Um, he was able to introduce body-worn cameras. Uh, he was able to uh, grow our capacity and capability as it relates to firearm training, um, public order, and I can go on with quite a, a few others. And for this, we have to thank him for his outstanding leadership. Mr. Matthews is on his last five months. Uh, he'll be ending his contract on, the, on or about the 20th of April, 2021. Um, as he indicated to you earlier on, they are in the process of selecting his successor. So it is my extreme pleasure on behalf of all Met police officers and members of support staff, and I'd like to invite you up, Mr. Matthews. <laughs> to present a plaque on behalf of the organization to you, and it reads, presented to Mr. Michael Matthews, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force appreciates your four years of stewardship and dedication to the organization and the people of the Virgin Islands as Commissioner of Police, 2016 to 2020. I, um, I'm really silenced, <laughs> but uh, it's taken the deputy this long to actually catch me out at last. So I, I will be very, very brief and just say uh, this, this means much more than you can ever know. Um, my pride of, of leading such a brilliant team of men and women, um, I can't say it enough, but uh, this means an awful lot. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Could you just give yourselves a hand? Yes. You, you have laughed at my terrible jokes. Um, none of them were funny, but you were kind enough to laugh, and I'm grateful. So give yourselves a hand, right? So um, it remains for me to thank His Excellency the Governor, Deputy Governor, Deputy Premier, Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner, our HR, Mrs. Reimer, KA, K's Engraving, Plax, Chef Dora, Chef Elaine Francis, Neyman Chalwell, Tent Tables Chairs, the Police Welfare Association, Sergeant Collis Fraser for the music, which you'll hear in a minute. <laughs> um, DC Jerome Morris for the um, videography and um, photography and Miss Bruley's hairstyle. <laughs> GIS, our media personnel here, our maintenance and planning committee, all staff. And just in case I miss anybody else, we thank you all. Um, sir, Your Excellency, again, I must detain you, sir, to do the unveiling of one of the plaques and uh, Deputy Governor to do the unveiling for another plaque. So one is for fallen police officers, the other is for fallen um, civilian staff. I think that is very, very, very touching that we thought of that. Mm -hmm. 